So now we take a look at how to calculate confidence intervals. There is only one little major difference here. The method of calculating confidence intervals is the same as for the one sample case or one proportion case. The difference here is we no longer assume that the two proportions are equal since we don't have the situation of a hypothesis test anymore. So we don't assume that these two proportions are equal. So in this case, all we do is in the formula for the standard error that we had, we are going to put in each of those separate proportions, P1 hat and P2 hat observed, as calculated from the data. Other than that, nothing else changes. So the confidence interval here is still going to be the difference, because we're looking for the confidence interval of a difference. The difference in the two, minus 1.96 times standard error, and the difference in the two with a plus sign in the middle. Nothing else changes. So here's the calculation for that, based on our data from the sample. Nothing else has changed here, so we've got here the first proportion calculated, and the second calculated, and then the variances of those in there, and then the square root of those. So this part here is working out the standard error, and then the rest of it is working out the lower in the upper end here. Have a look at the calculation, and make sure you can repeat that. So the other thing, of course, is we do need to always check assumptions. And the assumptions here of the Bernoulli model is we have independence of observations. We're assuming that each person that's picked in the metro and the regional are independent of each other. And there's no, no reason here to doubt that. The 10% condition that we aren't sampling more than 10% of the population without replacement. Population is large, we've got very small sample sizes in comparison. Then the metro and the regional groups are independent. Those two populations are independent, and they were, of course, randomly selected independently. And this is the idea that you've got at least enough of success and failure each of the categories in the particular classes. So we've got at least 10 in metro and 10 in regional over here. That's something we'll look at after later on. So 95% confidence interval we saw earlier here is 0 0.126 and 0.253. Here, notice that zero is not in the interval. And earlier, we rejected the hypothesis that the two proportions are, were equal. So if you actually reject the null hypothesis at the 5% level, or 2.5% level if it's one-sided, then the 95% confidence interval for the difference will not contain zero. If we don't reject the null hypothesis of equality at the 95% confidence interval, then you'll find that zero will be in the interval. So if you actually, uh, if you like believing the null hypothesis that the two proportions are equal, and based on the hypothesis test, then you will find the confidence interval of the right confidence will also contain the zero value. So in our test, we found essentially because there's metro minus regional, that metro proportion of uh, voters who say yes are higher. And uh, of course, this is just based on one sample, so other samples may have other results. And as we said before, we don't know for sure whether this particular interval contains the difference or not, we can't tell that in advance, well, because this patient's a single sample here, we can't tell that. We know that if it's a 95% confidence interval, that on average 95% of such confidence intervals based on exactly the same kind of sampling, with the same sampling size, will contain the true value of the difference. Well, we've said that before, so nothing new here. So, for comparing two proportions, the idea here is that one of the issues is if you take a look at this idea of proportion, P minus 1, uh, over, times 1 minus P hat over here, over in the variance of the sample proportion, the problem we saw earlier is this thing is largest in the middle, near 0 0.5, 0 0.5, and small in the end. So you can see the variance, it depends on where you are. If you're in the middle, because the variance is larger, you will actually find that uh, you require a larger difference to be able to decide if two things are the same or not. At the ends where the variance is small, 
you won't require such a large difference. So the problem here is that we will have differences in uh, how these hypotheses actually work out depending on where we are. Even for the same difference, we might find closer to 0.5 that we will say that the null hypothesis is not uh, going to be supported or the null hypothesis is rejected. But for the same difference at the ends near zero and one, you will have some other result. So here's an example, just to look at some other ideas. This is obesity with heart disease. And uh, the general thinking here is that there is a physiological connection between uh, uh, obese people and those who experience heart disease here. So there's this proposal that social disapproval of obesity leads to stress and heart disease. Now in Samoa, which is the Pacific Island, not very far from Fiji actually, it's on the east of that, obesity is considered beautiful. So before a lady or woman gets married, for three months she's isolated in her home and all she does is eat, do no work, so she can gain weight. So there, there is no stress associated with obesity. And so in that case, in Samoa, you'd expect to have our low, a lower rate of, disease, of heart disease or heart or death leading to heart disease. So here is the data from Samoa, American Samoa women, cardio deaths for, for women, both obese and the normal class. And if you take a look at this, let's just see whether you find, well, if you find, if you look at this, this is about double. We were 16 deaths here. This is double the sample size, and this is about half. So is there much difference there or not? That's something we need to decide. Well, if you look at this, uh, how does this compare with adult obesity rates in Australia? Well, uh, in our sample there, we've got about a third obesity. I think you will find in Australia, it's not that much different actually. So in this case, we're looking to see whether there is evidence that there is some relationship between cardiovascular disease, deaths from cardiovascular disease, and the proportion of obese and non-obese people. So P1 and P2 here will denote the proportion of CBD deaths in the obese and non-obese group respectively. We're going to say that there is no difference versus that in the obese group there is a higher proportion of deaths. And so all the results from before hold under the null hypothesis that PD, that PD had the difference between proportions is normal approximately with mean zero and variance given by a bar of PD hat, which is going to be calculated based on the combined proportion. So here are the calculations for those. You can check it yourself. And we can find the standard error here by taking a look at the calculations from before. The estimates here, estimate here of the combined proportion is the total number of deaths due to cardiovascular disease over the total sample size. And here is the standard error for the hypothesis test of the equality of the two proportions. The Z statistic here is working out to be 0 0.340. The probability of the P value here is 0 0.368. So this shows that there is no difference. In other words, we failed to reject H0 here, the null hypothesis, and conclude there is no difference in cardiovascular related heart deaths for both the obese and non-obese groups, as I've said before. Here's the, the calculations for the whole lot. You can see how the calculations here for the P head was worked out and the standard deviation over here, uh, or the standard error. So look at the code and I think you'll find this okay. Now, the next thing is introducing a new idea which is going to be different from proportions. We'll, take, we'll start over with the, looking at the problems with proportions first here. The problem with proportions is it's limited to lie between 0 and 1. And as I was saying earlier, a difference of 0 0.05 doesn't mean the same thing. It depends on where this is. So closer to 0.5 where the variance is large, it's not such a large difference. But closer to, point, to 0 or to 1, the 0 0.05 difference is quite large. So here, a 0 0.05 of 0.5% is 10% 10, 10, 10 here, and whereas 0.05 of 0.1 is 50%. Quite different as far as the ratios go.
So another way of looking at these kinds of proportions and differences is by odds ratio. And we'll start looking at that in the next lecture. Thank you. Bye.